Aaron Joseph Hedges was a 38-year-old hunter from Bozeman. He decided to go elk hunting in the Crazy Mountains in early September 2014 with two friends, Greg Leitner and Joe DePew. The hunters had planned a week-long trip and began at the Cottonwood Lake Trailhead on Thursday, September 3rd, 2014. Hedges brought a bow, arrows, and a handgun in his pack, while his friends carried rifles. They decided to base themselves around Campfire Lake. The group had two horses and a meal, but Aaron had walked in. They started their travel on the Campfire Trail. For some reason, the meal spooked and started bucking, which threw the supplies and kit it was carrying off trail, which had Aaron's sleeping bag. Aaron decided to head up towards Sunlight Lake on September 5th at 10 a.m. to try and replace his lost sleeping bag. He was going to replace his sleeping bag by a cache the group had placed there on a hunting trip the previous year, which contained an extra sleeping bag. He had also planned to seek shelter at the camp where the cache was. His friends told him he needed to return to the camp because the area he was going to is isolated and dangerous at night. Aaron explained he was just going to grab the supplies and return to them that evening. Unfortunately, the plan didn't pan out. His friends called him on their Garmin walkie-talkie at 4 p.m. and the equipment showed their GPS positions on the screen. The position of Aaron showed he was on the very edge of the screen. He had missed the fork in the trail towards Sunlight Lake and was heading northeast for some reason. This would be the last time the group would hear from Aaron. His two friends realized Aaron was definitely missing on September 6th when he failed to return to base camp. A snowstorm then came in on September 7th with 18 to 24 inches of snow, with temperatures falling dramatically from 40 to 50 degrees to 10 to 15 degrees Fahrenheit. Aaron wasn't reported missing until September 8th when his wife Christine notified the Sweetgrass County Sheriff's Office after Greg and Joe had called her. The time between when authorities were informed and Aaron's disappearance is somewhat odd. The wife and friends gave justification to their decision by saying they had searched for Aaron. Also, he was armed and was an experienced woodsman. The head of the Park County Search and Rescue, Corporal Greg Todd, wasn't able to draw any firm conclusions at the time, saying he can't. And, quote, it's the million dollar mystery we have right now. We just have so many unanswered questions that it really just doesn't give us much of any of direction. To me, that just seems too long to report somebody missing. I can understand if your buddy's missing, you can go out and look for them for a day, but after that you need more help. I might have waited a day, he might have killed something and it might take some time to get back to camp. So I'll go look for him the next day. See if he needs help getting stuff out. If I can't find him by the end of the day, I'm getting the H out of there and asking for help. I can't speculate or second guess." Unquote, Todd said. Quote, I've been doing search and rescue for a while now and people react differently. In this situation at hand, I can't speculate on the thought process. Unquote. Although the group could blame the lack of cellular phone coverage and the remoteness of the area. When the official search had started, the bad weather had hindered efforts to find Aaron. The storm made air searching almost impossible for the first couple of days and horseback riders were initially sent out before others joined in. The search and rescue teams focused on the area that stretches from Cottonwood Lake Trail to Trespass Creek. The search team included 20 dog teams, 7 horse teams, 59 ground searches, and eventually the National Guard and private helicopters equipped with night vision equipment and spotlights joined the effort. Wednesday, September 9, 2014, Aaron's boots were found the second day of the search, way east of Sunlight Lake. They had been intentionally set side by side. Nearby was a camelback water bladder and just off trail was a fire pit with a partially burnt cigarette pack. Plus a fire bundle, two waist belts from a backpack which had been cut off were also found but despite an extensive search, nothing else. The bladder's tube connected to it had been removed, leading the searchers to believe that Aaron had tried to drink water. Strangely, the searchers were in the same spot a day or two before but hadn't come across the items. It was odd that Aaron had removed his boots in the snow and cold weather. 
this could hint to hypothermia had set in, causing him to remove clothing and his boots, but he would have only been able to travel a short distance in two feet of snow. Sniffer dogs that were in the area did not pick up the scent. Even though finding this evidence, by September 22nd, officials decided to scale back the search until they had received more information. Nine months after the disappearance on June 22nd, 2015, Roger Beslanowicz, a butcher from Powell, Wyoming, found Aaron's belongings while he was visiting some relatives at the Rear Anchor Ranch in Sweetgrass County. Roger had to wait while one of his relatives got done fixing a fence. He had some time to kill and wanted to look at a beautiful view, so he decided to go on top of a ridge. After taking the view in, he took a shortcut through a stand of timber and saw an orange hunting vest as well as some clothing and a backpack. He said, quote, My first thought when I saw clothes piled up against a tree, I just knew there was going to be a body there. There was a lot of bear activity where they flipped the rocks over to eat the bugs underneath. I just knew there was going to be a body there, but there wasn't. Unquote. At the scene was a bow, socks, shirts, sweatpants, vest, and a backpack. He had assumed small animals caused holes in the backpack. Wrappers from granola bars with other debris was scattered nearby. Aaron's driving license and gun were also found in the backpack. Quote, I thought some out-of-state hunter got cold and disoriented and wanted to go home but he couldn't find his stuff, unquote, Roger said. Quote, so I gathered it all up and put it in the backpack to haul it back out. When I was just about done, I saw a piece of paper and it was part of his license and it had his name on it. It said Bozeman, Montana. Unquote. The gear was only a short distance from the main ranch house and safety. After this discovery, the area was searched and oddly at the head of the ridge was a thermos cup and an open energy drink. Some guests found a skull underneath a dead tree on August 8, 2016 near the Sweetgrass Ranch. Law enforcement then began a careful search of the area, which they uncovered less than 80% of Aaron's skeleton all within 50 to 70 yards. Most of the remains were concentrated in a 20-yard area. According to Under Sheriff Alan Romberg, the spread of the remains were not atypical. Alan said, quote, You have to consider that he has possibly been there over a year. Within that year, you have weather events, predation, scavenging, everything from ants to bears. Sweetgrass County Sheriff Dan Tronrod said, quote, it's still an ongoing investigation. Are we going to be able to tell what the man died from? Probably not. There's not bullet holes in the skull. There's nothing else that we can see. The forensic pathologist will look to see if there's knife wounds on the bones or hatchet marks. But I'm guessing it's going to go down as one of those mysteries." Unquote. Aaron's body had a Samsung cell phone on it and investigators were hopeful to recover data from it to maybe gather further insight into his death. A Bozeman-based data retrieval service found it to be corroded beyond repair in late August 2016 due to being exposed to the elements for nearly two years. In an attempt to remove corrosion, it was given multiple chemical baths. Rebecca Ray in the Landover, or where the items were found, said the area was full of pine trees, broken down branches, and tall grasses. Quote, it's pretty low where it was, actually, Rebecca said. It wasn't too far off, we just would have never guessed it was that close. He could see the house, unquote. One theory of what happened, that Aaron could have been hypothermic and then became disoriented, shedding layers of clothing and his boots, then heading in the wrong direction. This seems unlikely even to the most experienced outdoorsmen, because if the hunting party began their trip from Cottonwood Lake Trailhead on the west side of the mountains, and Aaron was going to Sunlight Lake to the north. How did he end up on the east side of the range? A storm was hammering the area, and he would have walked east along the sweet grass drainage, 15 miles, a lot of it off trail through rough terrain, including heavy foliage and rocks. Seemingly impossible to cover the distance with no boots and fairly deep snow and freezing temperatures by himself. Searchers showed skepticism that Aaron could walk from the creek to the area where he was found barefoot. From Sweetgrass Creek to Rain Ranch is around 13 miles out. That is as the crow flies. 
so it is actually around double that because of the terrain. Aaron was close to a road and within sight of buildings where his remains were found on the Acre Rain Ranch. Sweetgrass County Undersheriff Alan Romberg said, quote, He was very close but just didn't quite get there, unquote. Out of fear of getting caught trespassing, police believe he may have passed up the opportunity for shelter. Aaron and his two friends were known for poaching and trespassing. When his wife, Christine Hedges, initially reported her husband missing, she had told dispatch Aaron had entered the area by trespassing on the Park County side. What do you guys think happened to Aaron? Please leave a comment on your thoughts and thanks for all the continued support.